today is chilly and uh, the weather doesn't seem like it's going to be on my side. Yesterday evening sort of a low pressure system blew in so looks like we're going to have uh, some cloudy skies and maybe some rain today. I went to get my food barrel and uh, the next trail here I realized this is a portage trail for that rapid up there. I treat my water. I just keep uh, tabs in my pocket, the catadine ones. There's no like gross flavor, so it doesn't really taste like a strong chlorine or tap water taste. They're also twice the money though, too. You can buy the cheaper ones, but they taste like chlorine. And uh, anyways, uh, yeah, I find just keeping those in my pocket, filling up and dropping one in as I go is the easiest way. wild mushrooms during the day I'd eat half of them for dinner when I cook them and then I'd save these soggy cooked mushrooms and eat them out of my hat in the morning cold and soggy I called it the breakfast of champignons this is better my sugar I know what you're thinking, Jim. You're sweet enough already. But I do take a little sugar. I'm trying to wean down on that because I hear apparently sugar is worse for you than heroin nowadays. One thing about coffee is that it makes you so they say one cup a day is good for you. I think and that's part of the reason. 30 cups, not so much. I feel like I'm stalling a bit, but I don't want to uh, freak and carry the canoe all the way here. Good lord, that's gonna be fun. By fun, I mean not fun. So here I go back for the canoe. Not easy to smile there. As of now, I have to do 30 kilometers a day to finish this trip on time. And um, that's pretty pushy, you know, with good current, uh, long days, not too many portages, if any, I'll be okay. But the longer I take, the further that daily distance needs to be. And um, that's got me a little concerned. We'll see how I feel at the end of the day. Um, like I said, there's six kilometers of serious white water to get through here. And after that, the rapids are a little bit further apart and I can make better time. Um, but I'm worried that after the next two days, my daily uh, travel distance is going to have to be like 40 kilometers on average or something, which is crazy. But uh, I'm still not going to get panicked and start rushing. I really don't want to carry this right now. It's one of those things, it's like... You don't feel like getting up in the morning when it's hammering rain. You don't feel like picking the canoe up and going. But it feels good to progress. So I know that if I move forward, I will progress 
despite the fact I don't want to do it right now, after I make that progression, I'm going to feel good. And uh, that's one of the things that definitely helps me get going. Slowly but surely, I'm not around the uh, side, the underground side, the semi-subterranean side slaw. Say that three times fast. Semi-subterranean side slaw, semi-subterranean side slaw, semi-subterranean side slaw, slag law, Sasquatch, Sasquatch. Well, it seems like I may have picked up an old horse packing trail. Um, it doesn't look like it's been used in a very long time. I don't know how much longer it's gonna go on for or where it's gonna go to, but for the last couple hundred meters, I've been kind of following a trail and it's been way easier going than just bushwhacking over boulders and uh, weaving back and forth. See that? That's a good sign. That's been cut by a person. The reason you could tell it's a horse packing trail is because it'll be narrow and deep cut like this. Like almost like a rectangular shape. And then oftentimes when that gets too deep there, they'll start walking beside it and there'll be two tracks. And uh, that's a sure sign of a horse packing trail. You can kind of see the two tracks here, one there and one there. This obviously hasn't been used for a very long time. It was probably used either by uh, the horse pack hunting outfit back on Keel Lake at one time, or maybe even uh, sometimes during the summer, trappers and people that lived out in the bush, they'd bring their horses in for the season and then they'd board them again in the winter. And uh, so somebody maybe could have lived in this country, I'm sure. It relates to that cache we found. The North Cannell Road, if you know the way and all the mountain passes, you could get horses into there pretty far by trailer. Then you could follow the Cannell Road on horseback and then cut probably maybe four or five days through mountain passes if you're doing about 20 clicks a day or so and you could probably get here by horse, which is kind of cool. That'd be another adventure for another time, I guess. At the creek. Son of a bitch. I walked too far. I stopped realizing, I'm like, where the hell am I? Bushwhacking too far after losing the trail and so I just cut directly towards the river would have felt more comfortable if my GPS was working
Okay. We are at the final descent. Like 50 more meters to go. I'll be reunited with my outfit. And we're gonna load this puppy up and put it on the Hess, baby. Wow, what a mission. Gonna walk this right out to the river. Now, the stupid part is I didn't scout all the way down river or I would have seen that. And also, I just pulled right into that. Like, I should have just stayed middle. I would have been fine. I was trying to get f***ing cute or something. But anyways, there's a tip for you. If you get spun around in a rapid, it's okay. Just paddle forwards. That is what I just ran.
Anyways, next one looks like uh, class three, probably not gonna scout. Just kidding. Looks like maybe a class one plus class two. I'm gonna go check it out. Just terrifying being out here alone. I gotta tell you, it adds so much more fear to the whole thing. Those are mosquito larvae. This river is pushy. Man, these rapids are like super, super fun. Just big water enough. The boulders are making it challenging though. I wonder if the water was a little higher, if it would be easier. But I could see that if it was high water, it'd be like a raging torrent and I'd be lining or portaging some of these ones. Anyways, time to go scout. Beautiful evening. Oh, hello, up close and personal. Uh, beautiful evening. And uh, just so far, this whitewater section on the Hess that I was so terrified of, I thought I'd be needing to, uh, you know, line, scout, portage, run, line, run, run, portage, scout, scout, on and on like that. But it has just been one beautiful runnable rapid after the other one with a couple that were really, really raging and one that I spun backwards on and almost dumped. But uh, yeah, for the most part, it's been awesome. There's been a few where I can kind of scout from the boat. This one doesn't sound too sketchy at all, but it's a big blind corner. So I'm just checking it out right now and I just see a crystal clear tributary pouring in. That means potential fish, people. Beautiful. Doesn't look like there's pouring much of an eddy here. there, though, to fish. All right, let's look at this rapid. Uh oh. Well, this is just a raging rapid. It looks pretty intense. So that's where you want to hit it. Right, right in here. See, I think we have a, a runnable rapid on our hands here. I saw something looking a little squirrely downriver and I saw what are some huge boulders that look like they're gonna be hard to see when I'm coming down river and a tight tongue. On this part I'm gonna to want to try to hit the tongue right there and get left of this boulder. So that just upped the stakes of this rapid for sure. So now it's gonna be yeah yeah, if I smoke that boulder, I'm, my goose is cooked. I might destroy my boat or trash my boat and flip. So I'm gonna have to be really careful. I'm gonna have to come down to the right of the boulder, hit the wave, get left to the right of this rock at the base of the rapid, aim for the right of this rock, and then I'll be okay. I'm gonna go for it.
Waded my canoe ways up river so I could front ferry across. See how my uh, bow's on an angle and paddling forward, and the uh, the current of the river mixed with the angle of my bow and my paddling power means my net movement is sideways. Okay, enough fancy talk. Some serious business about to go down here. Do that one. talking about Woo! Oh, awesome 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 white water day it was runnable rapid after runnable rapid but most of them weren't easy and just challenged me enough a lot of boulders to be dodged and of course they got my heart pumping especially because I'm out here all alone if I if I'm in the right place which I might not be um, after this, it should be pretty smooth sailing. I'm going to pull over, pick what looks like a nice place to camp. But lots more rapids to come down river. Fish of the trip, yeah! Thing he wants directions. Beauty. Look at that. Towards the frying pan, good sir. We got some drizzle. I'm through the white water section. I kept moving on, I wanted to fish. I kept looking for the clear tributaries. And then bam, bam, bam three beautiful arctic grayling and i said that's it this is where i'm camping tonight so just freaking absolutely epic day so first i gotta set up my tent decent enough place probably the flattest place yet hopefully uh, we don't get a torrential downpour or i'll get washed away but it probably lives still and that pretty much what I judge all my decisions on out here. Will I live?
One task accomplished. Hate setting up the tent. Next task, get wood. People sometimes ask, Jim, why do you do this? And uh, it's for moments like this to look at the map and say, can I do that? Uh, very few people can say they've done it or, or would have the skill to do it. Do I have the skill to do that? Can I do that? Do I have the mental capacity to do that? And putting yourself out there and feeling the fear and uh, just getting through it by your own wit and your own you know, elbow grease, blood, sweat and tears, whatever you want to call it and finishing something that challenges you, uh, there just is no greater feeling on this earth. Putting the challenge of this river in front of me and forcing myself to progress little bit by little bit at a time really makes those small goals worthwhile and the whole goal of completing it feel amazing. If we can just progress a little bit each day, uh, we'll be happy. I have a lot of wet clothes just from sweating under my dry suit. So um, I'm gonna rig up a drying rack and uh, dry them out by the fire. I didn't bring many clothes on this trip. But I left a sweater in mayo. So I'm down one sweater, which means I don't wanna be toting around too much uh, wet stuff. We're going to make a drying rack, a drying rack, a drying rack. We're going to make a drying rack. Skip to my duty, hey. We're going to make a drying rack, drying rack, a drying rack. to sharpen. Drying rack, the drying rack. Skip to the duty hay. Oh, I need my spit piece. Spit piece. Piece across the top. What we need for the drying rack, the drying rack, the drying rack. What we need for the drying rack is the top spit piece, yeah. That's going platinum. Advanced. This is for advanced only. Especially when you get it looking this beautiful. <sighs> da 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 da! Advanced bushcrafting with Jim Baird. Lesson one. Do something that a drunk monkey could do. Uh. 
So yeah. That's gonna get all my stuff nice and dry. Next camp task, cut up the dead tree. Coming right up. Looking forward to relaxo time. Everything's damp and we don't have much kindling. So what do we do? We use some old granola bar wrappers, baby. Oh, hell yeah. Garbage in general. It's a great thing to use as kindling. Especially when things are a wee bit damp. Fire was being a pain in the ass because uh, all the kindling was wet because it just dumped rain and I was too lazy to climb up the hill through all the wet brush and getting my snuggly pants wet to get proper kindling. Those are gonna dry quick. Look at the steam barreling off of them already. fire is raging and preoccupied with drying clothes so I'm gonna cook the fish the fish you think I can eat all that I think the answer is yes <sighs> this fire is hot I'm a little too close I feel uncomfortably warm
fire was perfect in the end. Arctic grayling is one of the best tasting fish, but it spoils relatively quickly. And because for the most part it only exists in really far flung areas, you won't see it in a fancy restaurant. And um, transporting a fish that spoils easily through aquaculture isn't a smart idea. Last fish. I guess that's about it. I'm gonna finish up this fish and go to bed. Probably about midnight. Um, but anyways, awesome end to an awesome day. I can't believe I'm still a little hungry after pounding all of that fish. Well, I was gonna go to bed, but I thought I should stay up and wait till my stuff is dry. And I put the pants on so they're nice and dry. This is borderline there. The socks are kind of up high. If I had another rock, I could get them down low and that would be better, but they're going to take a bit longer. And the undies, well, these are just a write off. Just hilarious, really. But they're pretty much done. Stay up for another 10, 15. And that should be good enough. There you go. Wet clothes, build a drying rack, dry them out around the fire.